Where are we exactly? We are in, yeah, what was the bank and then was a church and now it's Cat House, Cat House proper, sort of uh, in Beacon. So, um, as you see, it's, it's, it's kind of rather spectacular a little... building, but having known about the building and then and its scale and also the, the vault, which you'll mm -hmm. see. So, just the fact that it was a bank and a church already seemed to encapsulate a lot of Americana, a lot of the issues. And then the subtitle, Bank Church, Cat House, the subtitle is The Sins of the Father. So, mm. um, and considering that, we have the, what I call the Holy Books of Evil mm. over here, which I'm um, here, come on up close, and we'll see. Uh, they also, sometimes I call them the Holy Books of, or the Holy Books of Sin, the Holy Books of Evil. Sometimes you could just call them best-selling uh, racist uh, early well, I 20th see century the name some, some Dixon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Ooh. that's what's complicated and troubling about it, at least for me. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be troubled about these books. But The Klansman was a book uh, that the um, Birth of a Nation film was based on. So and this who, guy... Who is Thomas Dixon? Yeah, this guy, Thomas Dixon, wrote the script for... Uh, Birth of a Nation, but before the film there was the book in 1905 and then it was a play and it toured the country and was wildly successful, made him rich. But even at the time it was, um, you know, people understood that it was problematic and it was controversial. But despite that, he was able to get the momentum and the money to make the film with D.W. Griffith. Woodrow Wilson was behind it, who was president at the time, so this guy was mm. going in pretty high circles um, and quite famous in the early 20th century. It's largely forgotten now, but some scholarship is starting to talk about these books again. Um, I think as we kind of mature and are able to address the difficulty of them and not just ignore them. So mm. my feeling is not to ignore them or to burn them. He would actually probably like that because that would just show once again his victimization and uh, being from the South. And he's from mm -hmm. North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. Um, so he viewed himself as a victim? Yes, yeah, so he, he kind of coined victim. the idea of the... Um, the lost cause, that whole notion of even gone with the wind, it comes afterwards, and it's this idea of the South was virtuous and good, and it's, and it's been decimated, and, uh, and now has, mm. has lost its, um, uh, its virtue, because mm -hmm. he's, he's very moralistic, and virtue, uh, and virtue is mm. very important to him, so much so, purity, of course, that mm. the books often, often end in suicide or something where the purity, the, the purity of the primary characters has been sponged by something, you know? What's, what's on top of these? Um, yeah, so I, my feeling was not to burn them or to ignore them, but actually to read them and then to festoon them with African symbols. I figured this would be the best way to annoy this person and also to neutralize you know, their negativity and mm -hmm. to sort of That's redirect objects. it. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're, these are rusty nails. Some of the rusty nails come from um, shipping pallets. So there's a, there's a mm. tradition in sort of magic and in not only voodoo, but uh, European magic where you would uh, take rusty nails from coffins. So rusty nails release the spirit or seal the spirit. So you can use the nail like that. Mm -hmm. So these are obviously like driving a stake through the heart of the book, but they're still, you can still read them. They can still open and then there's drawings on the insides of some of them. So it's, it's more se we're sealing the evil. Yeah. And, tra and transforming it. So, um, and these, this is the African uh, Congo cosmogram shape, this diamond shape, which we'll see it kind of runs throughout the exhibition. And this circle and across is the, is the um, Celtic sun cross. Mm -hmm. And it was appropriate about a clan as being their sort of primary symbol. Mm -hmm. Because the clan, not surprisingly, comes from Scot the Scotch-Irish. This guy, Thomas Dixon, Scotch-Irish. The first six or seven members of the clan were Scotch-Irish. And I'm Scotch-Irish, and my name's Dixon. So, and the really sort of shocking part is my father's name's Thomas Dixon. So when I saw the books, I was like, what? Why is my so, so loving you, father's um, name on this book? Have you looked into whether there's a relationship right. between them? Right, so I kind of went down a kind of deep rabbit hole of reading. There's a biography about this guy. He even wrote a memoir. And... Um, so I've read the books and read about as much as there is about him. Uh, so we're not we're not blood related, but mm -hmm. I don't feel like that alleviates me of culpability in some way because there's a, mm -hmm. there's so many cultural overlaps. Uh, I I think too is what's um, important too. It's not it's not necessarily that you're you're directly re that's the systemic part of these problems, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're, they permeate the culture. So I'm sure anyone could find it. 
if you scratch a bit at the surface, you end up some like connection in these base. That's why it's called the country's original sin. That's it. So anyway, there's some drawings inside the, the specifically the Klansman book, which I've done three, and I always do the same drawings on the same pages. Oh, tell me so about the drawings. See. They, they're kind of a, um, a lexicon that developed over time. I also did drawings just separately without the books of these. And you can uh -huh. see that there's, this says, this is, reads Dixie, frontwards and backwards. Uh, Here's a Confederate flag with the X. Here's some skulls that are, are bound by infinity, which is a Sanufu um, divination tool, which I made that myself, but it's based on this kind of Sanufu thing, which is of twins, mm. and then they're um, united by a kind of infinity sign. What, what is the this here, the writing on it? Right, the writing that's taken from an old piece of mine, but it says, if you believe it until you die, it was true. Mm -hmm. And this one says, do not fill the emptiness of the grave with the cement of belief. So they're kind of, um, something of a, uh, of, a, of a basis for my own sort of relativistic belief system, which I feel like is difficult to co-op into a kind of um, absolute pure notions that these books sort of embody and the problems mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So that's why they found their way onto those books. But then we have in the space uh, what is the altarpiece or the back of the altarpiece, uh, which again, see, that's kind of, a, which is what you see from the door from the window. Uh, the sort of the primary attempted fusion of these two somewhat at odds images of the Congo cosmogram, which mm -hmm. the Congo cosmogram is, is the sun in motion, basically. So mm -hmm. you've got what's called the four moments of the sun. So you've got that one at the top would be noon and the one at the bottom would be midnight. And then the sun goes down below the horizon and then goes back up again. Mm -hmm. and so it becomes an image of death and uh, regeneration. Mm -hmm. Whereas that circle with the cross in it is the uh, Celtic uh, sun mm. cross. So it's singular, it's a monolithic sun. So, and both of them include a cross. So interestingly, they're both the sun representations, one's in motion and one's plural, the other's singular, but, and they both include a cross. So the whole cross idea has been something that's kind of concerning. I mean, I'm, I'm curious if there's like deep roots that connect um... The, Celt the origins yeah. of the Celtic. Well, that's the big question, yeah. Uh -huh. Because the Portuguese show up in West Africa with their sh sailing ships and the crosses on mm -hmm. the sails and the missionaries carrying crosses, and mm -hmm. they arrive in the Congo, and the Congo already has cross imagery in mm -hmm. their work, in their sculptural representations mm -hmm. and in their symbolic structures. So the, you know, the missionaries had to process that. Mm -hmm. And then, interestingly, the the Congo converted to Christianity within 10 years without like violence mm. or coercion, but um, there's a lot of scholarship, mm. Cecile Fremont being one that writes about like how that, uh, how there was this kind of um, con um, convergence of ideas around the notion of the cross. Mm -hmm. So you could argue, and this is kind of the interesting point that the, that the crossroad symbol is cross-cultural, uh, that it influences early Christianity. And I've been looking a lot at first century carvings that are on sarcophagi that's, you know, barely Christian, it's still Jewish traditions, where it's a cross, but it's not a crucifix yet. The crucifix actually arrives quite late in Christian iconography, like fourth, fifth century. Mm -hmm. So it's a cross, but without a person or without Jesus on it. But you can think of it like um, uh, Jonah and the whale, which is an Old Testament story where the whale goes, uh, Jonah goes beneath the ocean and then beneath the horizon and back up again. So it's, mm. a, it's a death and regeneration. And if you think of baptism itself, which Jesus was baptized, so it precedes Christianity by John mm -hmm. the Baptist and this idea of going below the horizon and rising up again. So that cross and crossroads symbol, also the cross, you know, is, is Hermes, escort of the dead, was God of the crossroads. There's the Ankh in Egypt and all of that precedes the crucifix. And so we'll come around the um, the other, well, I guess, so this was the floor, you know, for the exhibition that we had at Cat House proper this year. So this is the floor repurposed from the, sh the exhibition that was titled Diasporic and Tropic Dimension. Oh, you, you brought cross, the floor up yeah. here? Uh-huh. Oh uh -huh. my god, okay. And wow. the Cross Cultural Cross is the title of the show. Uh-huh. So you saw that show. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you about the relationship between this project and that, and that show. Um, exactly. Or if, if you were conceiving of of both simultaneously or, or just talking a little bit more about how they relate. 
Well, I was standing on the floor. So this this was one side of the room, and then these two on the side were the other side of the room. So the gallery is almost exactly 16 by 16 feet. But there was enough space in the middle to kind of make a cross on the floor. So I was standing on the floor. And in, in this spot, this says the grave now, upside down, as if reflected, sort of in a pool. And this is, that cutout is where the, uh, the opening to come from the, from beneath the floor up into the floor for mm. the exhibition. So there was an, a ladder upside down that you would climb up to get, so you would come through that hole. So I was basically standing on the floor when I was thinking, oh, this could make a nice painting, you know, if you flipped it up. Right. And also being someone who's looked at the funeral or non, like probably way too much or think, is that the grave is at the bottom center of that painting, which we have. We, 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 yeah, we need to yeah, we can talk about show, that. Show people that painting. Yeah, the funeral or non. So, um, so I was thinking how the, that cutout in the floor of the gallery was, I always thought of it like a grave and that one would come up from the underworld. Is, is it worth just saying a little bit more about the, what, what direction means? Oh, direction. Yeah, so that people know what that is. Well, that's good because, um, yeah, that's in the title, Diasporic and Tropic Diremption. And Diremption is a, a little used word in English, but it's what uh, in German, I and mean, I don't know the German term, but it's used to, as a Hegelian term. So Hegel really liked the term Diremption, which um, meant something that's a, it's divided in its essence. So it, as a whole, it's still divided. So he thought of it in terms of consciousness, and even somewhere wrote that... Um, that uh, the need for philosophy is a result of diremption. So mm. philosophy is there dialectically to, to, to mm. attempt but never succeed in fusing this essential mm. division that is human consciousness or is like the fall of man, let's say, from, mm -hmm. from the purity of the garden in the kind of Christian way of thinking about it. So, um, so that's where diremption comes in in that, that title. And, and yeah, so that's a little bit complicated, mm -hmm. but... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm wondering about direction being in play with, you know, what's on the other side of this with the two, the two symbols. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, all. well, that, that, that cross imagery of like uh -huh. going under and is, is sort of a sign of mortality and, mm -hmm. and, a, and an essential division, the cross itself, if you go beneath the horizon and, and then transformation becomes essential. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting the way Europe as a philosophical tradition, you know, enlightenment has attempted to claim dialectics as its own. Mm, mm -hmm. Whereas I think in these kind of this, well, so you could even say the black and white imagery of this, but um, it's always, it's, it's called in a condescending way, dualism, as opposed to dialectics, where dualism mm. meaning that, oh, these people didn't yet have this idea of, of, um, mm. of transformation that occurs between opposition, mm. that they kept their oppositions uh, Set, just totally separate. separate. Yeah. But, as is true of the sort of the cosmo, the cosmogram, which is motion, is the sun in motion. I mean, and there's a book called Aztec Philosophy too that talks about mm -hmm. this, the idea of, of motion within a system, which would allow for a dialectic to occur, not just as, as dualism. Yeah, I would think in pre Surely. pre you know uh, written philosophical mm -hmm. traditions. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Yeah, please come on in. We're <laughs> We're just talking about the show, so you're welcome to enjoy it or listen or do whatever. So, um, so this this was the floor for that show, and I have this kind of uh, habit of harvesting, as I call it, harvesting uh -huh. elements of exhibitions and then reusing them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So there was a lot of content in that exhibition uh, that also related to this show. So you asked, though, if I had it all in mind from the beginning, no. But when I was standing on the floor and thinking, oh, this would make uh -huh. a good painting, uh -huh. then I found out about this space being available and realized that it could be repurposed into this kind of altar, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know? That would embrace the, the well, the, the tomb or the vault, which is over here. It, it's such a great metaphor, the floor becoming the painting, but here we come to the vault. Yeah, and the vault, uh, which is the original to the bank, um, has in it a fang reliquary object. Uh, reproduced from a Metropolitan Museum catalog, uh -huh. so um, which is you know just print inkjet printed onto canvas and then spray painted uh, by myself into these like you know the African colors. That basket which has these skulls in it would have been like a vault. Yeah, I mean no one would have ever mm -hmm. transgressed that sacred space of those skulls, mm -hmm. which were ancestral skulls, and the the sculpture was meant to guard and protect those skulls, and they would be taken out ritualistically and remembered. So it was a cultural memory and uh, heritage and the archive was in that basket in these skulls. 
So there'd be up to eight generations. So it's like, you know, 200 years. So this was, and then they would be rotated and circled out mm -hmm. with fresher skulls mm -hmm. that were more powerful. But, um, but of course, the missionaries and the colonialists, the first thing they do, in a sense, is separate that or sever that relationship between mm -hmm. the sculpture and that spirit world that was beneath. Mm -hmm. Ship the sculpture, you know, to Europe, and that's what Picasso and other finds in the early 20th century, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then dispose of the skulls. So you've created a rupture then in the belief system. Um, so here, and there's only, from my understanding, eight of these sculptures still attached to the baskets with the skulls in them. In existent mm. in the world, you know, mm. so they're incredibly rare. So in this, obviously, you wouldn't be able to see the skulls in the basket, but I've superimposed um, in silk screen um, Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of the census communis. So did. da Vinci, this is this is this is interesting. So anyway, da Vinci, with the tools of science that he's pretty much inventing, uh, dissects this human skull and tries to locate locate with an X mark. Um, Right here, <laughs> the census communis, the common sense. And the um, common sense was thought to be where the five physical senses come together in the brain. Mm -hmm. So the sixth sense, which was the soul, was considered the soul. So um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the common sense. And then and the, that observes all the senses coming together. Yes. Sense out of the senses. Yes. Yeah. And then that would also connect you to, say, quote, the animus mundi, or the world soul. So that was how one related to others, was through this sixth sense of the soul, the larger world soul, and you mm -hmm. have a little part of it. Mm -hmm. And that was basically goes back to Aristotle, and it was medieval, but, you know, da Vinci said, okay, I'm going to go in there and find this thing if it's supposed mm -hmm. to be there, because that's, you know, rational, and that's also mm -hmm. the beginning of... Uh, and, and the beginning, <laughs> I always think of it as the beginning of the end for the soul in Western mm -hmm. materialist secular thought because mm -hmm. he goes in there with the tools of science, tries to locate this thing, and mm -hmm. it's not there, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. later, Descartes, they located, tried to locate it in the pineal gland, and there was a lot of theories as to mm -hmm. where the soul mm -hmm. could reside. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. But it's the notion of the census communis or the common sense that kind of interests me. And then, and then going back to this sort of Enlightenment, Hegel, Kant business, Kant develops the notion of the census communis into the notion of the, the community. So the spirit of community is the common sense. And that's how we, it kind of gets handed down to us in like sort of practical American thought, uh, the common mm. sense. Whereas it's what defines a we or an in-group. So we would be, you know, um, whatever it is that we can't really necessarily name, but that causes a union between a particular group, how you define a we, and that can be changes, you know, according to different configurations. We're also, we're, we're in a bank vault, so I'm wondering <laughs> if we could connect that, um, that idea of this, um, you know, the census communis, I think it's called, um, yeah. with, uh, yeah, with capital. Well, that's, I mean, I, I'm only thinking of it now because Hermes, the escort of the dead, has always been a big fan. I've been a big fan of Hermes, escort of the dead, who's also the god of the crossroads, who's also the god of commerce, because commerce, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, mercantile class trans, uh, crosses borders, mm -hmm. basically. So um, you could maybe think but of it. It's also like thinking this. of the abstraction that underlies capital right. ca and capitalism, and, you know, the abstraction away from. The, the five senses to the sixth sense that observes the other. Anyway, that's what I thought. Oh. That's not, well, I even think that back here is part of the show, even though it's not named, nor should it be, but this, I think, kind of, this is the holy of the holies back here. I mean, this is so, scary back here. Yeah, this is the unnamed part, the empty wow. room. Uh, this is where I hope Jewel here, who just appeared, is going to sing her song. This would be amazing. Awesome. Yes. 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 Is that what she yeah, that's what I figured. Oh, right. She wasn't in the, the video, so. No, that's why, because she was back here. So she, your music will just emanate from the, okay. from the yeah. back of the tomb here. Um, and the acoustics are very good in here, too. But, um, you know, like the unnameable, the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. where there's no object actually there represented. So that's just, uh -huh. the, just the spirit, you know. Maybe talk about this, and we'll talk about the finally. There's not, there aren't that many elements to the exhibition, frankly. I mean, I didn't want to compete with the room, and um, I, I, so 
it already has its own power to have this kind of book. Right. cathedral. So um, this is pretty much it right here. But we, have an, we have another book here, There's the though. books, the holy books that, that are sort of sitting on the bench back there. They're the holy books of evil that could potentially be on the pedestal. But here, here's the, What's this book? the primary holy book of evil, which is the ultimate one, which is titled The Sins of the Father. Uh -huh. So it really is the subtitle for the show, but also sort of encapsulates what's sort of the problem what, what, with what is, the, what is this book? So it's another one of these books by this guy, uh -huh. Thomas Dixon, who wrote The Klansman, um, and uh, written in 1912, so a few years before The Klansman's made into The Birth uh -huh. of a Nation. So they must have been in some sort of production at that point. Uh -huh. And um, he was already known then for being like sort of the ultimate racist writer and unapologetic about it. So that's why it becomes a very interesting to read mm -hmm. because he's not cloaking any of his feelings. Mm -hmm. So you can really get the, the sense of the, the quote original sin of the nation through this guy's voice, you know, because he's an advocate. He's not hiding his racism. Um, and the other thing, he thinks he's fighting the good fight. That's what's really depressing about mm -hmm. reading these things because he's in his mind virtuous, mm -hmm. you know, and he's defending mm -hmm. virtue and purity. And the book ends in suicide, which is really for the white characters mm -hmm. because their, 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 their ideals are so high that they can't be maintained. Mm -hmm. So they wall themselves off from the world around them and basically there's suicide. So I, I feel like The Sins of the Father, more than The Klansman, which is the more talked about book because of the film, this one encapsulates the contradictions and problematics of racism just on a purely, say, theoretical, did, not did even Did you actually read all these books? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, no, this yeah. one's really hard to read. And yeah. I'll say, because the character who's the Klansman, who's a Klansman, and he's also, like, in the Senate, in the South, it's not a okay. name, it's probably North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, he, it starts with an, an affair, and a love affair between a black man, a woman, and, and this white, who's his servant, but mm. not, not even in, the, in a slave sense. It's more like she's a part of the town and then she starts working for him mm -hmm. but there is a power dynamic there but he's but the first chapter is when he's falling in love with her i mean literally he he's so the story's about love mm -hmm. and 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 his inability to acknowledge his true desire love and affection for this woman um so it's and because of this high ideal that he thinks he has to maintain because of his race purity mm -hmm. and and it's and notions of black joy in this conversation you know that term even seems relatively new the way that we talk about black joy at least the way it's kind of permeated the culture at this moment but he describes this character using that kind of terminology her joy her beauty her enthusiasm her, her vitality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he obviously admires and respects and loves her the character and, and the writer and and then mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. but that love is severed and denied so it's like he's like iago and othello you know like iago it's just he, he sees love, but he twists it because he feels like he can't have mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's really, uh, Iago is an interesting character in relation to this, these, um, this guy's attitude towards race. You know? mm. um, so anyway, inside this book is this text, which I wrote called The Grave Digger, and uh, it's a short text. Uh, but it, it touches on some of the things we've talked about already with census communists and... Um, uh, it's an attempt, and there'll be a link to this somewhere. Um, that whoever's listening to this. But what's the image it. here above oh, it? Oh, right. So the image is a fusion of uh, the funeral non by uh, Courbet and his the painter's studio. So I have a kind of long theory about that. That's not really about this show, but mm -hmm. I but I do because Courbet kind of represents uh, uh, democracy and liberation mm -hmm. um, and emancipation, mm -hmm. but but. You know, say working class as opposed to aristocratic uh, yeah, France. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, so the revolutionary spirit in, in France. So um, I I uh, I always I go back to those paintings a lot. And like we were talking about with the funeral or not, it, it sort of to me is the basic structure of this work, where mm -hmm. the grave is at the bottom. In the funeral or not, there's a skull to the to the uh, right of the grave. Mm that's small in the painting, but very important, and, um, and across in the sky, but above the horizon line. So it's, and Jesus is on it in Courbet's painting, mm -hmm. so he's, he's out of the sort of the, the world of the, mm -hmm. of the people. Um, I don't know, I think that's probably a pretty good introduction to the work. Very good, wow.